Okay, from watching the last video, we learned just a little bit about random numbers and libraries here. So we know that we can always, regardless of what library is up here, we could, we, sh we, we should be able to use all of the things that are in C++ written in blue. Unless there's another library that just decides to write over that which causes problems, but we're not going to worry about that. All C++ that are in keywords, all C++, all C++ keywords are going to be usable regardless of the library. But we can't always use the C out C in thing. Why is that? <clears throat> well, we need to include the library that comes with it, which is the IO stream. That's a standard library, and just to save us some time here, we're going to be using the STD package, which is the, which is a standard package that the C out comes from, and now we can use it. Okay, but now we're going to be using another library called C time, probably throughout the, with the remainder of these videos here, and I also want to use the SRAND. Because uh, remember what this does here, it's in the last video, all this does here to keep a long story short, this allows us to generate random numbers. Okay? This this program statement is coming out of the uh, C time library here. Now the C out C in stuff is coming out of the IROStream library. Okay? And this using namespace allows us to uh, shortcut this name here. That way we don't have to type in STD and then C out here but we could still type it if we want to its full name but we're only going to type in just this here it keeps things simple here now <clears throat> let's say we have um, let's say we make another variable called uh, let's say box okay let's say it equals seven and let's say we output let's delete this here now I'm not really using this SRAN thing here yet, but I'm probably going to later on. So it's just it's just probably going to be there for the remainder of the tutorials because I I use random numbers a lot. And uh, now this is nothing new here. We can print a box to the screen. We can print the value of the box on the screen here, but let's, what if we want to make 12 different variables here? Let's say we have a box 12 here. Now this is something new here. This is called an array. What I just did here, I just uh, declared 12 different variables here. Okay, now let's say we have, let's just say we have um, box of 7 is equal to 251. Okay. Well, nothing happened because I deleted the... Now let's say we have box number 7 here. Now, <clears throat> so basically we have 12 different variables here, so box 7 is a different than box 3. Like I could have said, like a box, just or arbitrarily three, is equal to 9.99, and I can output box three as well. <clears throat> and they just store values. We, instead of making like 12 different variables, like A, B, C, D, E, we can just do this all at once here, and it saves us some time. And there's more. There's some more things we can do with arrays. But um. So we can even add them together. Box 3 plus box 7. And it'll add the two, the two values together because they're just two different variables here. 1250. <coughs> okay. So, um, well, let's look at this here. Well, we have 12 different boxes, right? Well, they only go from box 0 to 11 here. Like, for instance here. 
if I said box 0 equals 21, that exists because it doesn't start from 1, it starts from 0. We have 12 different variables that go from 0 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It doesn't go to 12, it stopped it. Yeah, so they're only, it only goes up to 11, from 0 to 11. Like a box 12 does not exist. Because the array starts from 0 to 11 here. Now let's say I didn't declare one of these here. Just like any other variable, it would it would have a problem. It would we'd get an error. I'm going to hit continue this time since I'm not doing anything with the information. It would get this error. So, uh, so we can declare these. We need to declare all these here. Now we can't just say box of 12 is equal to something here. It there'd be a problem here. I can if I tried to run this here, there it wouldn't even run. It would say, tell me there's build errors. But, um, <clears throat> just to go back here, I can't, box 12 does not exist here. If I tried to make a box 12 here, and I set it equal to 3, there could be some things wrong here. And if I try to output it, well, basically, a uh, box 12 since it doesn't exist, the, the compiler is going to try to access some memory that doesn't that hasn't been that doesn't really exist, and it it does print out the three, but uh, it says there's some corrupt the variable box is corrupt here, and it did print out a three here, but it's s uh, it's accessing memory that wasn't really stored for the for the box here and now I'm it's crashing I can't even close it so arrays can be very dangerous here to the operating system and it, it's just a problem it's not good so I'm not gonna do that again but you, you have to be very careful with arrays and the bad thing about it is that um, the compiler will not check to see if you're um, accessing an array that doesn't exist if like if you try to access a box of negative one the same thing would happen here negative one here that the same thing would happen it doesn't exist box three the same thing would happen well no box three does exist because we're in I might have to remake this video. Um, but anyway, the point is that uh, don't do that. Don't try not to do that. There can be problems here. But let's say we have a box of twelve, and okay. Now let's say we make. So we make box uh, four equal to four. So we can declare all these to whatever we want, and we output box four. Now box four does exist because we already have a box of twelve. Let's try and run this here. Let's see, uh, and it works this time. So, say so, so. Try to be careful. When these can be dangerous here if they're not carefully. It's a great source for bugs to come in, is with these arrays here, but there's a lot of things we can do with it. So remember that uh, the, the, uh, we only go from, we're only going from 0 to 11, so box, the first box starts at 0, and the next box starts at 12 here. So let's say we want to initialize these boxes here. Well, what we could do here, we already know that if we already try to output like box the la let's say the last box here box 11 here now no I want to make a f five boxes here so we're gonna output the last box here and I want to make this a five so we have five boxes and I want to output box four we're already gonna get we're already it's already until so it's not initialized here okay 
but if t another way to initialize is we can use these braces here which is a block of code now we're just going to say like 3 comma 2 comma 5 comma 4 comma 1 well respectively it goes from box 0 equals 3 then box 1 equals 2 box 3 equals 5 and then so on the last box is equal to 1 which is box number 4 equals 1 if I wanted to output box 2 it would be this third one here because we go from 0 1 to 2 okay so does that make sense so we can initialize these to whatever we would like. Now let's say we made just one here. What do you think is going to happen? It outputs zero here. So let's say we made one comma two here. One comma five. So the first two boxes are going to be initialized here. To one and two, or one and five here. For instance, box one or box 0 is equal to 1 here. And I'm going to get a compiler error because I deleted the bracket. The brace. And box 1 is equal is going to equal 5 here. But basically uh, all the other boxes here that haven't been assigned here will be 0. So to shortcut this, if we say this here, these will, this is a shortcut to initialize er every uh, array to 0. So <clears throat> that's the that's the start on arrays here. Now I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna apply them to random numbers in the next uh, step here, and I want to I'm gonna uh, sound like a broken record, uh, warning you about the dangers of arrays. Remember, box five we can only use box four as the maximum. We don't want to use box five because it doesn't exist. It only goes from zero to one, two, three, and four. So the first box is always zero. The last one's just one less than what the, what you initialized it to. And this right here, we can initialize all five, however many boxes we want. Six, comma, four, comma, five, comma, we just, any numbers. Nine, seven, no, nine. And then um, notice how the last box will be uh, zero. Because I didn't initialize it. I didn't include that in the set. If I delete this one here, the last two boxes will be initialized to zero here. Now we can just initialize them all to zero by just including these braces. And that's... I'm going to stop right there, and we'll we'll continue the discussion on arrays, and then we'll get back into <coughs> uh, some real programming again with the random numbers here. So I didn't use the random numbers this video, but I will the next time, and we'll be back in a couple minutes.